Don, I, like you, have been thinking about consciousness. And to begin with, we say, well, where did consciousness come from? Obviously, it came from an evolutionary process. And so there's a whole uh, subculture of people talking about the evolutionary psychology of all different kinds of traits, including consciousness. Yes. Uh, how, how does this work? Well, as far as perception and evolution goes mm -hmm. uh, and consciousness, the standard view in the field is that um, natural selection has shaped us to have conscious experiences that truly reflect the state of the world that our perceptions are, as they say, veridical, true to the state of the world. And the argument is quite simple. Uh, those of our ancestors that uh, didn't see truly were at a disadvantage in the competition with those of our ancestors who did see truly. And as a result, they uh, were less likely to have kids, less likely to survive long enough to have kids. So we're the offspring of those who saw truly, and therefore, on evolutionary grounds, we can expect that our, our senses are, in general, Reliable, not perfectly. Because if your senses are attuned to the world, goes the theory, that you are more likely to eat lunch than be lunch. That, that's right. <laughs> you're, you're more likely to, to avoid that tiger and to catch prey yourself because you're seeing the truth. Mm -hmm. And you're more likely to uh, you know, avoid the cliffs and, yeah. and the snakes and so forth. Right. So, so if you see truly, um, you will have greater fitness than those who, who don't see truly, and you'll have more kids, and so your genes for seeing truly will get passed on mm -hmm. and, and, to your kids. And get amplified over generations. Absolutely. The idea would be that they spread throughout so that very few of us um, will have perceptions that are, are marginally, you know, that are false. Okay. Uh, so um, maybe a few you know, people with psychological problems might have you know, perceptions that are odd and schizophrenia or something like that, but that's, that's a rarity. Mm -hmm. Most of us can trust our perceptions. Uh, so that's the, the standard view, and I think that uh, it utterly, it's utterly false. It, it mistakes some of the key points of evolutionary theory. Evolution, so now that's a radical claim. I mean, right. what you're saying now is, is critiquing what is not only the standard theory, but it, it seems like a very intuitive theory. That's that right. that almost sounds uh, obviously correct, and you're right. saying it is actually wrong. That's right. It, it, it seems obviously correct, and it's actually in the textbooks, in the standard, for example, vision science textbooks, the argument is given that evolution guarantees that our perceptions are generally true. Okay, so the burden is on you. It certainly is. Uh, to explain to me and everyone else why you have such a dramatic challenge to the accepted conventional wisdom. Uh, so first I'll give an intuition, then I'll give a little bit of more, more hard reasons why. The, the first intuition is that Evolution is about fitness in the first place. So, and fitness and truth are very, very distinct notions. Fitness depends not only on the state of the world, but also on the organism and the state of the organism. So, for example, um, a steak could have high fitness value for a hungry lion that wants to eat. This can have much lower fitness value for that lion if it's full and it wants to mate. And a steak probably has no fitness value to a cat.